So I wanted to give you a little bit of insight as to why this story is so important and to why your top acting will make a difference for many, many hundreds of thousands of animals, uh, Canada and Canada and the United States and, and possibly worldwide. The story begins actually in Durham Region, interestingly, <clears throat> in 1991. Um, and we were running a campaign to try and stop the local shelters in Durham Region from sending their dogs and cats to research, uh, which is mandated in Ontario. And in the course of that fight, we, uh, con we had contact with the uh, staff at the Bowmanville Camp, uh, which is actually absolutely a wonderful place at now, but at that time gave many hundreds of dogs and cats to research. And the staff who took care of the animals on a daily basis and fell in love with them hated it when the research truck arrived and they had to put the leash on the dog's neck and walk that animal up to the truck, the cats up in their cages and take them to the truck and watch them drive away and not know what their fate is. So they called us knowing that we were having this fight in Durham Region and they said, uh, will you help us? And we said, of course we will, call us when uh, you think that there's an animal at risk, we'll come out and, and get that animal. And so the day we got the call, a frantic call from the staff to say that this little dog by the name of Jessie had arrived at the pound a number of days before and had been there because her family had separated and neither side of the family wanted her. And so she was at one point a much loved dog but was ultimately discarded at the pound. And she met all the criteria for the researchers and we were told that the truck was on its way, could we come immediately? So we found somebody, left in the car, drove out here from downtown Toronto in a mad race, and missed her by, we don't sure, minutes, half an hour. And she was put in that truck and taken away, and nobody ever saw her again. And it was devastating for us because this was a dog who, although we had never known, never seen, I don't really know what she looked like. I never patted her, felt her cold, cold nose on my face. I fell in love with her, and we decided then and there that we would form our rescue program called Project Jessie, and that we would do our best to make sure that no other animals from Durham Region, in fact, in Ontario and elsewhere, would go to research, and that's what we've done for 21 years. It's interesting, I was invited by the research institute to come in and uh, a couple of years after Jessie was lost to us uh, into the institution that she went to and I frantically went down one cage after another because of course the animals are not given names they're given numbers and locations from where they came from and there were dogs from Bowmanville that had been there for 10 years but no indication that Jessie was there and so we never actually saw her or knew what happened to her um, and so we've been working on this campaign to stop these animals from going and we, in 2001, were contacted by a wonderful woman by the name of Lori Bishop who had moved from Alberta into Dundalk, Ontario with uh, her family and her two dogs, Wally and Royal. Wally was a young dog, Royal was an elderly golden retriever, she was 13 years old. And Lori hadn't had time to change the dog tags and Royal wandered off her property and nobody in town really knew where Royal lived and a lovely kind woman uh, in, in Dundalk uh, called the local animal control guy to come and pick her up, to pick Royal up and Royal disappeared into that facility and was never seen by Lori again and Lori spent, Lori describes Royal as her soulmate, as uh, somebody who was there with her in good times and bad and I can tell you from talking to Lori and interviewing Lori that this just about destroyed her uh, in trying to find out what happened to her dog. And all the institutions that she called to try and help her, the pound that took the dog, the town that contracted the guy to get the dog, the research facility that ultimately where Royal ended up, the animals, the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs in Ontario that runs the Animals Research None of them would tell her what happened to Royal. And ultimately, when we became involved, she learned that Royal had been taken to this research facility, walked off the truck, looked at as being too old for research, and killed immediately. 
Now this was a dog that had a collar with his name on it, had dog tags, had his nails trimmed, his coat combed. This was clearly a love dog, and yet nobody looked at that animal to say, this is a love dog, maybe we should try and find out whether this dog has a home. Nobody. The third dog that has really defined who we are and really driven the aspect of saving dining is a little dog by the name of Rainbow. And this is a much happier story for Rainbow. Rainbow is a purpose-bred oh. dog who was born at Marshall Farms, <coughs> and he, she was one of 40 dogs that was purchased in a veterinary program. And the veterinarians were to take these beautiful little beagles, Royal was about a year old, um, anesthetize them, sterilize them, and then kill them. Forty dogs. All to teach a veterinarian how to do a sterilization. Now that seems moronic to me, um, to do the sterilization and then not adopt the dogs out, but nonetheless that was the program. We met a very courageous student whose name was Dr. Anya Yoshenko, who was Rainbow's uh, student, and she refused to kill her dog. So Rainbow, one was the only one of the 40 dogs that ultimately survived, and Rainbow became the poster child for the campaign at the veterinary college to stop live terminal surgeries. And so these are the three animals that are in a way uh, embody dying, um, that so desperately need uh, people to tell their stories. And the wonderful thing about this particular way of telling is that many people, when I stand up, cannot hear the stories about Jesse and Royal and Rainbow because they find them so troubling, they don't want to listen. But this is a story. You guys have the opportunity to tell these stories to people in a way that they can hear it, and in a way, I think, that will change how they look at the world of animals and maybe something that they could do about it. Um, I just wanted to say that I sent to Linda, I did a little um, five or six page sheet paper. Barbara Kyle, who is a writer and, uh, and a wonderful supporter of ours, helped me edit it. So um, if you send me the email or Linda an email, I will uh, forward this to you. You can take a look at the pictures of, we don't have a picture of Jesse, but you can look at a picture of Royal and Rainbow and some of the other dogs that we rescued. Um, I'm happy to say that at the university, the live terminal surgeries, which is what was taking place, is now ended. The university now stops taking pound dogs altogether, so we've made some real progress. But we need to do more, and we're hoping that this film will uh, do it uh, for us. And uh, with your help, I, I, I have every confidence that that's going to be the case.